Welcome back, everybody. It's a great day here in the workshop. There's a big surprise in this gigantic box. You say hi. Bill, this is Petri dish. This is what brings all the sickness home. The youngest. Do we look alike? Are you gonna help me put this together? All right, let's get down. You can play with some other tools. A lot of you who follow my channel know that I'm a electric bike enthusiast. I've got an amazing creation that I built over there. Super high powered, 1500 watts, 160 Newton meters of torque. Newton meters, NMs. It's an amazing bike, but it's very purpose built for climbing hills off road. Inside this is an ad motor cruiser bike. This is the M. 65X. I am an expert in all things electric bikes. The battery is the most expensive thing in an electric bike. Do we cut the whole thing apart or do we just try to lift it out? Do we use those pliers? Yeah. Yeah, put it up in there. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, <laughs> whoa. Look at this. Woo! Look at those sidewalls. What do you think? Is that cool? Whoa. Oh. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Whoa. What is this thing? What's in here? Looks important. This is the front axle. Can you say axle? Front axle? Front axle. So this comes with a tool kit. All the tools necessary to assemble this come in this thing named tool kit. So here it is, all put together. I didn't use any instructions was very easy to do. The only issue was getting the front axle spacers sorted out. Now, if I read the directions, I'd know exactly where they would go, but I did it by trial and error, like a real man. Get a look at this. This thing has blown me away. I just, I just can't believe how sweet this paint is. These are not decals. This is all painted on. You got rear pegs, amazing adjustable kickstand. These are mechanical disc brakes. Hydraulic would be obviously more, more better. We have our compression adjustment. This is flat riding, city cruising, not any sort of extreme mountain bike trails. This is a cruiser. It's advertised as a cruiser. It's going to be used as a cruiser, a round town chick magnet. I like the, uh, how they organize their wires here. That is something that you don't normally see. You usually see a little bit cheaper plastic wire management. That's all painted on. These, on a cheaper bike, these would all be stickers. So the bike looks great, but if you don't have the right battery and the right motor, your awesome looking bike isn't gonna go anywhere or it's not gonna go anywhere very long. The quality of the battery makes the bike. This bike uses Samsung cells. That's very, very rare. Look for a bike that sells Samsung or LG cells inside their battery pack. That's one of the main reasons I chose this bike is because of this battery. Don't mess with anything under 15 amp hours. This is a 20 amp hour battery. This will get you where you need to go. This is a 48 volt battery. That's industry standard for electric bikes. That bike is a 52 volt battery. That's the, another tier level up in electric bikes. Now, the really, really fancy bikes that are mostly custom built run off of 72 volts. It probably came from the factory restricted to 20 miles an hour. Hopefully we can get in here and change that. Another big factor of why I chose this bike is the Bafang motor. Don't mess with anything else other than a Bafang. I have a Bafang motor in my extreme off-road mountain bike, and I have put that thing through the most rigorous testing. Underwater, crossing rivers, extreme hill climbs, long, long hill climbs where you are just floored 
and you're just rock crawling, rock crawling in low gear, right up the side of a mountain. Handyman Moto Vlog, out in the countryside. So far, I've got 37 miles on it. One complaint I have about this controller is the battery indicator. I like to see actual volts, not a little meter like that. Beaver Pond. So even though this motor is rated for 750 watts, or it's advertised as 750 watts, I think that's the nominal power, because when you really get on this, you can see it'll go all the way up to like 1300. Of course, I'm down to, down on the battery, so it's not gonna give me a full 1300 watts right now. Uh-oh, got a loose dog, oh Jesus, loose pit bull. Are we really gonna see this right here? Oh, I'm so sorry. My vicious pit bull just came flying out of her collar and nearly ate your chihuahua. Still can't get over how awesome this thing looks. The only problem I'm having so far is this rear brake is grabbing and it's surging when I put the brake on. I was like, shh, I can feel it grinding. Up we go, whoa, the power, the power. All right. Just hit 39 miles. And we still got a good ways to go. Gonna cruise up to the ghetto here, check out some encampments, and uh, head on back to the workshop. Look at these ducks, with their heads in the water. It's gotta be cold. I wanna see if I can get this battery indicator changed i may even have to get a whole new screen so that i can see the volts you got arrows up and down for pedal assist that's how you turn it on this is a horn turn signals that you can't see very dim lights for the turn signals and brake lights but it does have turn signals and brake lights probably could upgrade those as well it's one sweet ride but it's not for me i thought this was going to be the one and that's why i took this sponsorship. They're not paying me anything, but they gave me this bike. And I said, you know, I don't normally do bike reviews. Actually, I've never done a bike review, but that looks like a sweet bike. I'll give it a shot. I've been looking for a cruiser bike, a street bike, a get around town bike that's got the banana seat. This one has the Samsung cells in the battery. It's got the Bafang motor. Sweet paint job, cool wheels. It's got fat street tires. I wasn't looking for one with knobby tires. I did have to adjust the rear brake a little bit. That's not a big deal. I kind of expected to have to do that. The only problem is you cannot unrestrict the speed limiter. It tops out at 22 miles an hour. I've done several full charge test runs and you can watch it get up to 22 miles an hour and then doop, down to 21.7, 22, doop. you can read the watts. I'm only burning 500 watts. It only takes 500 watts to keep me at 22. This battery, this motor is capable of doing 28 to 32 miles an hour. With me on it, unrestricted by the controller, with me on this bike, it should do 30 miles an hour. But 22 is not for me. This bike is for someone who's unexperienced in riding a bicycle. My wife's bike can be unrestricted and goes 28 miles an hour. Uh, it's only a 500 watt motor and it does 28. Another thing you should know is the battery range. This battery is awesome and you're only gonna get 40 miles, maybe 43 to 45 if you're going really slow and doing a lot of pedaling. But the ergonomics of this bike are not designed to do efficient pedaling. But it isn't bad, it isn't bad. Uh, you can put in quite a bit of, of your own power and get some extra range. Got everything except one thing. There is no way to unrestrict it. I sent him an email. I said, hey, this thing tops out at 22 miles an hour. I went in, maxed out the speed setting, and they said, well, that's what we think is safe. 
I go, well, I don't think so. I'm not some grandma. I got places to go, things to do, and 22 is too slow. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the bike. They advertise that it goes 25. Um, if I had purchased this bike, I would be very upset that it maxed out at 22. It's restricted at 22. Verified by GPS. How do you do a return on something this big? You'll have to make sure you keep the box and all the packaging and package it back up and send it back. Hopefully they reimburse you for shipping. Find an authentic review. Find someone who did a real top speed via GPS. That's very important. Won't be doing another one of these unless I get a better one, one that I can verify that will at least go 29 to 30 miles an hour. We're gonna go back to home improvement videos. No electric bikes. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.